So flood plane deposition has always been challenging in one dimension. You know, the nature of a one dimensional model is that differentiating between deposition in the channel and deposition in the overbanks is kind of fundamentally 2D. And so it's always been a challenge and we're doing a lot of work on different algorithms that can make it better. And uh, those will be coming mostly in future versions. But in version 6.6, .6, we've added one new feature that's gonna provide a lot of value and have kind of reordered the way floodplain deposition looks in the interface and how it works to give you more flexibility and to make the interface kind of modular for the new features we're gonna add in future versions. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you through that. So I've just got a pretty simple model here. It's mostly in equilibrium, except the downstream friction slope I've made just a little bit below equilibrium so that over time, this thing is gonna deposit and uh, we're gonna get to see some floodplain deposition. I've got a constant flow that's up in the overbanks. If you kind of look at the cross section, the cross section has a channel and an idealized floodplain. I've got higher density of station elevation points near the channel banks because some of the algorithms will prefer that. Um, but that's the kind of model that I'm dealing with here. And so if I go to the sediment data and I go to the bed change options, that's where you're gonna control this. This is what it looks like by default. You know, we have this kind of two by two matrix of what algorithm do you want to use for deposition and erosion in the channel and in the floodplain? Um, and so by default, we only erode and deposit in the channel and we use the veneer method. And that's okay, but actually it's much more common to deposit also in the floodplain, but not erode in the floodplain. But this gives you some flexibility and let's kind of show you why that is. I'm just gonna, let's just run this as it is. We'll open the result and I'm gonna ask for cross-section results and choose the first and last time series and let's go to cross-section, say 5,000. And what you'll see is that, you know, we're allowing deposition in the channel, but no deposition in the overbank. And so we're just kind of filling up the channel almost absurdly and uh, that's not great. Okay, so if we go back in here and we say, okay, actually we want to use the veneer method. We sometimes call this the peanut butter method. It just kind of smears sediment in equal thickness over the whole wetted channel and floodplain. So essentially you're going to have equal deposition in the vertical in the floodplain as you do in the channel. And uh, what you'll see is we've actually separated the mass and the distribution algorithms um, in 6.6. .6. We'll talk about that in a minute, but by default, the veneer matches up with the veneer, um, which is just kind of the way the veneer worked in the old. So now if we go back to our cross section, and now I'm actually gonna ask for multiple plans because I wanna see this uh, the none method with the veneer. And, and so then cross section, and let's go back to 5,000. Let's actually turn off the bobber here. This green one deposits in the floodplain, um, but what we find is actually that's too much. We've kind of got a Goldilocks problem, right? The, the, the none method doesn't deposit enough in the floodplain, and so you get kind of absurd deposition of the channel. The veneer method, because it deposits uniformly over sometimes a really large floodplain deposits too much in the overbank and so you don't get enough deposition in the channel. And so the methods that we're adding are trying to find that kind of Goldilocks zone between those to use as a little bit of physics to try to differentiate between floodplain deposition and channel deposition, essentially getting a quasi 2D result uh, from our 1D model. Okay, so the new method that we've added is what we call the grain class threshold. And what that'll do is that'll give you a drop down with all of the grain classes. And basically what you're gonna say is that one of the reasons we're over predicting deposition in the floodplain is because bed load can't get up into that floodplain, right? We're depositing all of the grain classes up there. And so as a first approximation, what we could say is, hey, you know what? Maybe we should only deposit the grain classes up there that could actually reach there because they're in that portion of the water column. And so in this case, we're gonna say, you know what? Only deposit material that's less than fine sand. 
we're going to still use the veneer method for distribution um, and you'll see how that works out and if you kind of look at how this model is set up we only have two grain classes um, we have very fine sand and we have fine sand so if you say only deposit the material that's less than fine sand it's going to only deposit the very fine sand this is the intermediate result here we're plotting the none as this red dotted line and we're plotting the veneer as this brown line and what you'll see is actually we are getting a very modest amount of very fine sand depositing with the veneer method in the overbank. But it does give you an intermediate amount of channel deposition. Now this happens to be pretty close to the nun method in the channel, um, but it is going to be a little bit more realistic. And so that is the intermediate method that we've given you. Um, you know, this is a simplified model, so we only have two grain classes, but you could move that grain class up and down um, when you have a more well-graded system in order to find a more appropriate intermediate zone. So that's the new deposition method. But as we mentioned, we are splitting floodplain deposition into kind of a mass partition and then a distribution. And so the partition just says, how much material are we going to put on the floodplain? Um, it's either none or the veneer, the reservoir method um, is really only for reservoirs, or basically we use the veneer method only for the grain classes that qualify, and then the rest we kind of use the none method. This is really just a toggle between veneer and none for di the different grain classes. But once you deposit, all of these methods dep are depositing the same. It's just, you know, flat, equal elevation increments at each station elevation point. And uh, is that really the way that a floodplain deposits? Well, the answer is no, it is not. Um, we've been, you know, going out and taking some of these measurements. And basically what you see is you see natural levees. You know, most of the deposition is close to the channel. And so we have a couple of other methods here. Once the veneer or the grain class threshold method determines how much mass is in the floodplain, then we use these methods to determine how that mass is distributed. And you can use the veneer method or you can use a simple linear approximation that basically says zero deposits at the farthest wettest point and um, we're going to basically make a triangle out of that rectangle or you can use a more complicated distance decay. And so here's an example that I included in the user's manual that shows you know the same mass distributed three different ways. You know, here's the simple veneer method in red. Um, the linear method is in green. You'll see it's basically the same mass. It's just kind of turned up on an angle. So the maximum is near the channel and the minimum is at the edge. And then we have the distance decay method, which is a non-linear decay um, that has a coefficient. And so if you come in, you can choose linear or you can choose decay. And with decay, you get this lambda coefficient. The way the lambda coefficient works is higher is more of a decay. As this number approaches zero, you approach the veneer method. In the example we just showed you, you know, five gives you a pretty dramatic nonlinearity. And so here's an example of a result with veneer and different decays. And so what you've got here is, you know, brown is the veneer method, and then this is a decay of one. You'll see that a decay of one is pretty modest. It's uh, not even as strong an effect as linear. Uh, this is a decay of 0.3 that's really light green, and so that's getting very close to uh, the veneer. And then up here you have a decay of five, which again, it's not really forming a natural levy that disappears. You could even push that higher, uh, but you know that will start to have some feedbacks on your result. That can start to get pretty high. As it gets high, it can get abandoned. You know the water surface can drop below it. Then things can start to get flat. You can start to get flat natural levees. Not great for that to be you know commonly out of the water. And so there are you know disadvantages to turning that lambda up too far. But those are some of the new features that we have in the floodplain deposition world. I think they're going to start to give you much better results. And we are working on at least two to five other methods here um, that are even a little bit more physics based. I'm Stanford Gibson. I'm the sediment transport specialist at HEC and this video was funded by the H Agency SET program.